Greetings, y'all. It's Damon Stith, uh, president of HAMA. Um, and we're going to get started here shortly. I um, had a little bit of confusion on my start time, jumping around all these time zones. Uh, but we were scheduled to start at noon, and it's a little bit past noon. Just getting myself kind of in position here. We're going to be covering, um, hang tight here. Sorry. All right. What's going on, Kevin? Thank you for joining in. We will get started momentarily. But yeah, so we're going to be covering a um, uh, very touchy subject, which I don't normally touch upon it myself, but um, historically, uh, knife fighting is uh, one of those things that it, it kind of brings in, you know, you get all kinds of uh, opinions and really strong opinions, and, and, and rightfully so, uh, since knife fighting is, uh, fighting with a knife is a um, very serious, uh, serious uh, modality of combat, and um, it's really important with presenting, you know, proper information about knife fighting and putting it all into its proper context. So just to kind of go on record, I want to say that what we're going to be covering today is um, a cultural expression of knife fighting. It's in no way meant to be a tactical approach to, to fighting with a knife, but it's more uh, an exploration of the use of this type of weapon in, in uh, the history of in Capoeira's history. So, um, with us approaching it that way, it's a cultural art form as opposed to um, I think it's going to be the the um, the best tactical approach to fighting with a knife. I'll leave that to people that do that that type of stuff. Um, for us, we're going to be focusing on the place of the knife in uh, historically in Capoeira and um, how it's part of the movement, even though we don't see the knife being practiced uh, anymore. So uh, before we start, um, go ahead and get yourself a safe training knife. If you have a stick, if you have a butter knife, if you have something that you can use and move with uh, safely, then that's gonna work great. Uh, I'm gonna show you an example of what I have real fast. You guys come on in, get stretched out. Hold on one sec. <clears throat> So our movements are going to be based on a few things here. So one, we're going to deal with what we call, there's just a knife, I'm using a butter knife, um, a faca, faca de punta, which is a, fight, is a knife that you can stab with, but just a faca, the knife. And then we have, we have this here, which is the navaja, or straight razor, okay? so. Um, I have my straight razor taped up so that I don't cut myself when I'm moving around with the blade. But um, with the straight razor, you can still slash with it, but you have to use specialized grips when you're doing this with the straight razor. Um, whereas the knife allows for stabbing, thrusting, cutting, and different other movements and stuff. So it's a lot more stable uh, fighting surface. Anyways, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, get some movement in, and we're gonna see how the knife incorporates itself into this, all right? So now, another thing, knife fighting was something that was done in the past in Capoeira, and you see glimpses of it still manifested in some games. Uh, there were specific talks and specific games set aside for knife fighting, um, and when it was done, and when and how it's done now, it's more of pantomime movements with the fingers representing the knife or the razor, and you'll see a lot of mestres um, when they're playing, uh, kind of explore using their, their, their fingers as this like symbolic blade. All right. So, uh, the movements, the concept that we're going to be building upon is going to come from the natural movements within the Jenga. 
uh, the natural movements of watching other mestres using their their hands as the knife. So you'll see there's certain patterns when you jinga are conducive with using the blade. And then um, from historical images from the 19th century in Rio where they show uh, fighters using straight razors or knives. That's kind of where this is kind of coming into play. Um, anyways, let me go ahead and get this all set up and then we will get started. So go ahead and grab yourself a safe training knife. Make sure you have a little bit of space. Hopefully you guys can see me okay. It's gonna be a little weird. I'm using my vertical angle here, here on my phone. Turn it down a little bit. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, so before I jump in with some music and stuff, let's go ahead and start with the base position because most of our movements are going to come from this, all right? So we're going to start off with the jinga, all right? So the jinga is a primary movement you'll find in capoeira, and uh, this is where all your escapes and attacks and things of that nature are launched from, all right? So as we're moving, and I'm just kind of waving at people as I'm doing this, as we're moving, we're going to learn first, just kind of get our feet down, all right? Get the feet down together, and then we're going to start incorporating the hands. And then now while we're doing this, I want you to imagine the hands not just as like a protection, right? Because they are serving as to protect the body and protect the face. But I want you to see where the hands can be strikes, either striking with the open hand, which in the past that was the beginning of training for the edge weapon, okay? So starting off with the feet, all right? So I'm here... So basic Jenga, there's different ways to go about learning how to do this. But the main thing is I want you to imagine that you're standing on a triangle here. So here's the base of the triangle right here, moving here. Good. And now behind us, there's my base. And then behind us is my point or my apex of my triangle, all right? So here we are. What we're going to do, first things first, is we're going to trace, the, we're going to draw the base with our movement, all right? So I'm going to step from one side. One. Two, some of my hands, let your hands kind of relax, but you can see kind of what I'm doing is I'm flipping from one side to the other side. And I'll turn some music on in just a moment, but I wanted to kind of get you guys these things prime first, and then we can start moving into stuff with music. Good. Two, three, side to side, four, and I'm gathering in, I'm gathering in, I'm gathering. So right now I'm standing with the view of my camera, so I'm kind of moving a little bit more shallow, but I can really get off on these sides here. So this is the first part. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Awesome. Good. So now here, when I gather, I'm going to go ahead now and step back. Gather in tight, step to the side and step back. Good. Gather, gather, step back. Gather, gather, step back. Gather, gather, step back. Good. So now I'm in here. Close, close, fade back. Boom. Close, close, fade back. Close, close, and back. Good. Close, close, and back. Nice. Keep moving. A couple more of these. Very good, very good. Right now, more focused with the hand, with the feet than the hands at this moment. But I want you to see kind of what my arms are doing, what my hands are doing. <clears throat> Good. And break. So now, instead of gathering here now, right here, and then stepping back, what we're going to do is we're going to step to the side and sweep back. So I step to the side and I sweep. Step. Sweep. Good. Sweet. Sweet. Good. See how my arm comes in front to protect. These are also strikes. Good. Also clearing. Clearing and capturing. Four. And five. Six. Seven. A couple more. Eight, nine, and ten. Awesome. Here, on the base. Right now, we're on that base nice and wide. 
So, and what we're going to do is we're going to shift side to side. So any side to side movement that we're doing is defensive movements, avoiding attacks. At the same time, it's also this kind of juking motion to kind of make it difficult to follow where you're going, all right? So here, we're going side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, good, 10. Last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the ground now. Can you guys see me? Can't see me, angle down a little bit more. All right. Thank you, thank you, uh, Brother 52 Ways. Appreciate you. All right, so here we are. So I'm down here now, and I'm touching the ground. Touching the ground. Now this has meaning within the art. When we're touching the ground, we're, we're gathering energy. We're imitating like sowing and reaping as we're moving. So spiritually, it means we're kind of taking strength from the earth and as well as giving back to it, all right? But this is also a really good way to kind of get warmed up. Good, here, now, sweep side, cover, side, side, good, and boom, boom, boom. All right, so those are gonna be some base steps. We're gonna work from that, okay? So go ahead now, grab your knife, give me a moment, I'm gonna set some music up real quick, and then we will go. Get some music set up real fast. Sorry, next week I'll be more prepared. I was uh, expecting to go on at one. So, here we are. All right. <clears throat> so now, remember the main idea. We're going to incorporate the blade in with our Jenga, okay? So, um, what you'll notice, especially with my uh, mestres like Brandao, um, his hand movements are very, very erratic when he moves. And he, coincidentally, he's the one that uses the, um, the, uh, the, knife, the knife strikes, the knife cuts, you know, quite frequently when he plays. He's an older guy, um, and the knife comes out quite a bit when he's playing. And uh, so as opposed to the hand movements being completely rhythmic, meaning they... they, they they follow a set pattern, we kind of want to develop a little bit of the erraticness in our movements here, okay? So let's turn the music up here. It's not terribly loud, but you guys should be able to hear that a little bit. All right, so here we go. So when I'm holding a knife, what's common is the, in the Filipino arts, the earth grip or the pakal grip, okay? But also, you know, along the razor, is this heaven's grip, what they call it in the Filipino, in the Filipino arts, uh, heaven's grip or sock sock, I believe. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first as I move, if you guys can see the blade, I'm gonna jingle with the knife and I'm gonna let the blade kind of move with me. And I'm, what I'm doing, as I'm moving my feet and my body to this rhythm of the beating valve, I'm letting my hands counterbalance me and I'm adding these cuts so I'm cutting and I'm withdrawing, okay? So I'm cutting and I withdraw as I'm moving my feet and my body. So let's practice that a bit, okay? So you can start off with just these angles here where we're moving to the side. Then I start adding in these, boom. Let's try here. Horizontals. Then it's the vertical, or excuse me, diagonal, horizontal, horizontal. So, horizontal, one, two, good. Horizontal cuts, horizontal cuts. Awesome. So now try this. I want you to jinga, get your movement in. And then I want you to break it, boom, with a horizontal cut, then come back into your jinga. Come back into your jinga. Rhythm, boom, break the rhythm, and then back to your jinga. Okay? Ready? 
Back to your shinga. So here, I'm moving, moving, bang, I cut, then I go back out. Keep moving. Remember, break it. Break, cut, back into the shinga. It can be any cut you want. Boom, boom. Change levels. See, I'm here, I'm high, I'm also low, and I'm cutting. Keep moving. Remember, come in, break, I break in, I break out, I break in, boom, I break out. I wish I could see you guys. Break in, break out. Very good. Very, very good. Here we are. So now, on our base, let's go through cutting, okay? So just here, we're gonna move side to side. Horizontal cuts. We're just cutting here. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In the past, especially for razor fighting, the malangros or the hustlers, what they would wear is a silk scarf around the neck to protect from the neck being cut with the razor. Again, so the straight razor, when we're using it, we got pretty specific, you know, soft targets that we're going to go for and hit. The neck being one of them, all right? With the knife, the faka, we have more liberties for where we strike, okay? So good, again, back to it, side to side. So what I want you to do as you're moving, so I'm still on my base, but I want you to work on creeping forward and then creeping back, okay? And even kind of breaking the rhythm, if you want to. You can break the rhythm. As you can see, be seen as palm strikes, boom, headbutts, as you go, side to side, side to side. Go ahead and change levels too. In low, then we're up high. Good, we go low. And we're up high. And we're low. Small, bang, big. Very good. So we did horizontal, right? High, mid, low. Breaking the rhythm as we go, yeah? Then also kind of cheating space, moving forward, moving back, moving more to the side. So now let's go diagonal, diagonal. If you want to, work on switching your hands. And right now, we're just on that base. Even though my grip, now I'm in that ice pick grip, and I'm smashing. I can go same hand as I move from the side, from the side, switching hands. Practice that. Switch hands. Going in that. Switch grip, too. Here. Now I'm back here. Switching my grip. Switch my grip. Boom. Boom. Throwing that strike, that tapona, that double punch, whatever you call your palm strike. In the old days, the slap, pow, called tapona, or in modern times, they call it a galo punch, or a palma, but palma is more the straights. So as I'm doing this, you know, I'm, in, I'm adding my palms into it. Here's my grip is switched, switched, and I'm throwing my palms to strike, okay? <clears throat> so as you move, we're still on the diagonals now, okay? So I'm going diagonal with the heavens grip, tip the point up, or also reverse. Reverse it, reverse, reverse, good. So now I got tip down. If you want to, switch your hands. 
Now it's in my left hand. And I'm just coordinating my body, the knife with my body. Good. Switch my grip. A little slow on that one. Switch your grip. Now I have tip up. Right? So I'm cutting. 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 Switching my hands. Tip down. I'm doing the horizontal, the, excuse me, the, the diagonals. Low and up slight. The slaps. Boom. Top corner. Top corner. Top corner. Top on, palm strikes, slapping, following the same angle. Before you learn, in the, in the old days, this is what they say. Before you learn to use the blade, you would use your hands like the blade. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my top on us. They can be slaps, they can be, you can envision them as these hacks, hammer fist, whatever. They follow the same angle. Okay, same angle as my strikes. So let's go ahead and coordinate. Cutting, cutting. Top on a top on a cutting, cutting. Bam, bam. Top on a. And also we're switching the hands. Boom. Again, this is a cultural thing as opposed to a tactical thing. But in the past, they used to fight with knives quite frequently. Good. Boom. Good. Go ahead back now to your dominant hand. So now we're going to cut up, cutting up. So it's here with my feet, I can gather or I can just stay on my base and, and weave. Either one is fine. Again, this is all part of me coordinating this with my Jenga, okay? So here we are. Try both. I'm cutting up, cutting up. Even gathering my feet, gathering. So I move from one side to the other. Switching hands too. Now it's in my left hand. Very good. I'm assuming y'all are doing all right. Give me a thumbs up if you're doing okay. Thumbs up or a heart if you're with me. Here, back to it. Cutting. I can go big. Or small. Awesome. Good, good. Keep moving now. <laughs> okay, we're gonna play a game. This is the way the game works, all right? Stop the music for a moment. Grab some, mar some water if you need it, all right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is this, right? I'm just gonna jinga, right? You, you see, I don't have the knife. I'm kind of hiding it, right? So. We're gonna boom, we're gonna jinga, jinga. And I want you to think about hiding the knife and then finding moments where you can attack, boom, and then hide the knife. Even if I switch my hands, jinga, jinga, bam, hide the knife and back out. So see how I hit the knife? Moving, moving, hide the knife, okay? So jinga, jinga, jinga. And boom, attack. And see, the knife was there. There's a the knife, so you guys can see it. Knife was there, and then I'm away. Boom, back to the jinga. Boom, hide the knife. Hide it, find your moment, come in, strike, strike, out. Switching your grip if you want to. Hide the knife, hide, boom, bam, and out. So you see how I'm hiding it boom, as I move. Okay, that's what we're gonna do next. If you guys are able to, Film yourself as you're exploring this concept. So, once again, we'll jinga. The idea is to conceal the blade. When we're ready, choose your moment, stab, cut, and then get out. Hide it again. Hit, hide it again. Try to work both sides. This is, like I said, this is expressive. <sighs> Capoeira used to be played in many different types of games. And um, each one of these games had a different energy, a different spirit, and a different uh, skill set that you learned and that made you into a uh, complete capoeira, uh, you know, complete. <clears throat> 
meaning that you you learn to play the music, you learn the history and the philosophy of the art and of the people that that upheld the art. At the same time, we have to bear in mind that in Capoeira's history, it was it, it, it was a lot of time was spent literally going to war with with the uh, with the the government, with with the Brazilian government, with colonial powers, and there were many different ways that people fought, not always open and overtly, but some of that was through counterculture and through this, there was a certain amount of violence that was associated with this counterculture. It's part of the reason why we don't really see these kind of aspects still part of Capoeira because it, 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 it's, it, the art was illegal and it was deemed as vulgar. Yeah, if um, uh, Jean-Michel, uh, if you look up, um, Mestre uh, Hoboval, that's one of my favorites. That's who I'm playing right now. And uh, Mestre Moraes, if you look up Capoeira Angola, or Mest, um, if you look up Capoeira Angola, you'll come up with some really good stuff on Spotify. Um, uh, Mestre Pedrinho as well is on there. So there's a lot of really good stuff on Spotify. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this counterculture was associated with blackness. It was associated with being poor. It was associated with being you know, a criminal. Um, and there were, there, you know, when we see the art now, we just see the beauty and the strength and the power of it, like within its particular games inside the circle. But what we don't really remember is that, you know, these were the same people that were fighting, like I said, tooth and nail, not only against each other, but against um, the powers that be. So um, the knife, and as we explore this, the main weapons, apart from the body, um, was the knife, the razor, the stick, and then the uh, the facal, the the machete, um, and they had different names for these 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 um, these these weapons. But this is part of like old capoeira of you know uh, his, I don't, uh, historical capoeira before the time of the academies and. Um, you know, like I said, the, cir the circumstances are have changed, so therefore some of these things have kind of like, you know, went out of practice, and they only kind of come, they, there are groups that still do this kind of stuff, and it's kind of in the same light where they're kind of re-exploring these, these things, or there's old mestres that still remember, or they still play around with adding the knife or the razor to their games to keep young people and other people like on, on their toes. But like, yeah, there were full games that were dedicated, games that were dedicated to just like the manipulation and the use of this stuff. And unfortunately, a lot of it doesn't survive to this day. Um, so we have to kind of, we have to reconstruct based off the sources that we have. <clears throat> okay, so going back to our game now, okay guys. So here again, we're gonna Jinga, Jinga, and I want you to try to surprise, I can't see you, but I want you to surprise me with the attack, and then I want you to get out. Okay, back to you, Jinga, as if nothing happened. Surprise, surprise, and then go back to your Jinga. Okay, you can switch your hands. Boom. <laughs> in, out, and go. Okay? All right. Let's get the music back on and let's do it. All right, got some music going now. Here we are. All right, guys, so find your Jinga. Don't rush it, okay? Jinga. Jinga, here, keep moving. Here, I'm gonna put my hat on so you guys can see. Let me here. Okay. So yeah. Baba's Malandro. Boom. There's a knife. Here. Hat. Bang. There's a cut. Okay. Malandro style. Jinga. 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 Who had boom? There's the kick. Okay. That's the old stool stuff, okay? <laughs> Alright, here we are. With the knife. So Jinga, Jinga, and then like I said, explode in, explode out, and move. Try to switch your grips. Cut, cut, and move in. Move out. Try to hide it. There's a cut, there's a cut, and I'm back out. Switch hands. Hip, cut, cut. And I'm out. Again. Boom, boom, boom. Moving, moving. Then I'm out. Again. Cut, cut in, cut out. 
Good, good. Keep moving. High to nine. Bam. Energy. Get low. Change levels too. Bam. Cut. Cut. Again. Ready. Break it. Down. Down. Try to change your gaze. Looking here. <laughs> Defensive for nice. Yes. Run. <laughs> Run, Menino. Run. Um, that's a great question. Knife defense. Um, the body doesn't need to be there. And we will do a drill in a moment. The body shouldn't be there. And um, it's hard to kind of do in this context. But what we're going to do is if we both have our knife, we'll do a little bit of of counter cutting or interception, okay? Um, and maybe some 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 guiding and some passing with the hands would be helpful. Um, but first, we'll think about movement. We'll do that in just a moment. A couple more, a couple more. Again, so look at my eyes. I'm looking at you, but I'm not looking directly on you. This is when the trick comes, okay? So I want you to develop this side glance when you're moving, you're moving and you're not laser focused here, but you're watching, you're watching to the sides. You're giving the impression that, okay, nothing's bam, happening and then there it comes, okay? So now, when you're moving, try to break eye contact but maintain that visual, that visual, um, still be able to like see them in um, in your peripheral, okay? So, hip, Gina, see how my eyes, I still see. I'm focused on the camera, but I'm looking the other way. Boom, there. Come in. So we're talking about defense now. Let's bring it in. So, take a moment. <clears throat> so defense. So uh, typically, now again, I don't want to get too much into tactical knife fighting and uh, knife defense, self-defense. It's kind of a little bit beyond what the... What, uh, the purpose of this this video is it's more just kind of demonstrating the, the how the knife kind of comes into play in your actions your first defense is to see the trap and to be able to uh, avoid the trap or to offset the trap so if you know that I have the knife and I'm moving the knife around the first thing we would train is that it's not getting cut by the knife is to move the body okay and so um, what we can do it's kind of weird but what I can do is I can move the knife, and, you, and there's some drills that we do in, in when we're at in person, where we do um, I'll do like cuts, and then like what we will work on doing is kind of moving the body, turning to avoid, and even passing the the knife away, passing the blade as it comes at you. Um, again, it's really really hard stuff to 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 do in this type of format. But what we can do is do a little bit of evasion of the blade all right so now take away take away knife tactics and all that stuff and what I want you to do is remember the type of skill set that we're trying to develop in the capoeirista which is the ability to use footwork to use body angulation to use dynamic footwork and corporal dexterity so treat this as not like okay someone jumps out they, they mug me with the knife and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do all this my, my capoeira stuff no 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 this here I want you to use to develop your body, your sense of, of, of moving and avoiding. And we're going to start big, okay? Big is easy to start with. And then as we get comfortable moving big, then we can start making that big a little, little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller 
And then, then we'll start getting into what you can, what possibilities for self-defense. But I wanted to be really clear about that so as not to mislead anyone and not to give anyone any false, um, uh, false impressions about what we're doing here, okay? This could be on the up and up with that, all right? So what I'm going to do, if you guys can see me, that's what I do with the kids for the swords. You guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do my cuts with my knife. I'm actually going to grab something a little bigger so it's easier for you to see. And then so what I want you to do is I want you guys to work on using your Jenga to avoid these, these cuts, okay? You can rock back, you can shift back, you can move that leg, you can turn, turn in this way, and then resume back to your Jenga, okay? So I'm gonna something bigger first so you guys can see this a little easier, and then with some a little smaller, all right? I'll bring some more light here so it's a little easier. <clears throat> Hang on one second. So I got this stick, so I'm going to use this stick to strike, okay? So you guys are going to be moving in your Jenga, you got your knife, and as you see the stick come, I want you to get space, or get space, avoid the strike, okay? The first strikes are going to come high, mid, and low, okay? So you can move your head, move your body, move your legs. The next set is going to come on the overhead position so that you can shift to the sides, skiva, or you can completely gather off to the sides, okay? As you're moving to the sides, you can still start blending at an angle, but first start off to the sides, all right? And then we'll go into these angles, slashes, and then what I'll do is I'll get the knife and do the same thing, all right? <clears throat> so, all right, ready guys? Go ahead, Jenga, find your rhythm. And like I said, I can't see you, but I'm assuming you guys are already all moving. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strike to the head. Just kind of move your head back or go underneath. Very good. Again, the other side to the head. Again, move your head back. Go underneath. Keep moving. Keep moving. I'm cutting to your body now, okay? Cut to your body. You just kind of shift back. Or you can get down lower if you want to. If you don't work your angola, get down lower. Cut to the body again. Again, to the body. I'm going to step back now, so I'm going to cut to the leg. Okay, you can move your leg. You can lift your leg. You can... Uh, do that. This step back. You can step into the jenga, whichever one. Okay, ready? Cutting for the leg now. And boom, move your leg. Again, move your leg. Once again, move your leg. And again, move your leg. Once more, leg. Awesome, guys. So now it's going to be random. So you got to watch where I'm coming. Okay, so I'll probably gonna come high, mid, high, low. All right. I'll pause in between to give you a chance to get back into your movement. All right. But now it's coming from anywhere. Ready? And Jenga. So I'm assuming you guys are moving. So here I come. This one comes high. Oh, that one goes low. Oh, to the body. Head. Body again. Head. Leg. Head. Body. Head. And body. Okay, very good, guys. All right, so now... I'm going to attack straight down, okay? So again, you can shift off that angle, shift off that angle, you can skiva, skiva, or entrada, come back here, entrada, um, or boom, jinga and pivot to get off, all right? <clears throat> so it's coming overhead now, ready? So check it out, overhead and underneath. Ready, Jenga, Jenga, and one, bam. Here it comes again, bam, two, bam, three. Underneath again, four, five, bam, six, bam, seven, bam, eight, bam, nine. Last one, and 10. Boom, very good. Awesome work. <clears throat> so now, I'm gonna give a stab with the stick, all right? So again, I can use these lateral movements. Sometimes you can use this, this, this palming circular motion to kind of clear the space for you, okay? Um, 
can use that. Um, or you can turn your body to the side to, boom, avoid getting hit by the stab. All right? So I'm coming to the body now. Ready? Move off to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very good. All right, so now, going back to this. So same thing. So now, when we move and avoid, I want you to, to, to cut as you avoid, all right? So if I'm avoiding against the overhead, I mean the horizontal, and if I go back, I go underneath, I want you to cut, and then cut as you come back up, and even cut again as you go back to your jinga, okay? Again, if it comes to my body, right? I see it coming to my body. I know it's a stick I'm swinging, but void and cut, and then come back in. Cut and stab and come back to your jinga, all right? If it goes from my leg, it comes from my leg, I'm imagining that it's coming here, you know, I just, I step back and I cut, boom, cut, cut, and boom, back in, all right? If I go overhead, I move to the side, I cut, cut, and go back to my jinga. Okay, so the main thing is, whatever I throw, avoid, and, and give me some cuts, and some thrusts, and go back to your jinga, okay? Um, multiple cuts until you get to that safe place, to, that we're safe spot in your jinga, okay? All right, here we are. So I'm going to go ahead with the stick again. It's going to be random. So avoid and cut, all right? This is just to add that, that motion into your evasion, all right? So you're hitting whatever is available. Uh, but this, again, is just building in that motion into your, into your defense, okay? So I attack, you avoid, and you cut. You cut to your safe. I'm going to give you a chance to get safe. Good. I go horizontal. You cut and get safe. Good. I'm going vertical. Boom. You cut. Jinga. Get safe in your Jinga. Good. Again, going to your belly. Cut. Get safe in your Jinga. Ready? Going overhead again. Good. Again, cut. Boom, boom, boom. And get safe into your Jinga. Awesome. Here I go. Back to the side of the head again. Avoid. Cut. Get safe in your Jinga. And again, going to the body. Boom. Avoid, cut, boom, boom, get safe into your jinga. Keep moving, ready, here we go, going to the leg. Boom, avoid and cut, get safe, and back to your jinga. And pause, guys. <clears throat> okay, very good. I'm not sure how that worked out for you guys. Hopefully, you guys were able to interact with that and get something out of that, that, next, uh, that particular drill. All right, let's keep moving. <clears throat> All right, so we've um, we've done we've done basic cutting from our base, whether feet are apart, feet together, and we've done this basic angles, diagonals, horizontals. We didn't really do vertical cuts, but they're you know they're they're there, and then we didn't do thrusts, but they're there as well, especially when we're talking about the faca punta. And then, of course, any motion I do that way, I can do this way, incorporating tapanas and these slaps, boom gathers, headbutts, and whatnot. All right? Let me see. Grab some water. Do y'all have any questions for me while I check the time? Any questions before we continue? Thank you guys for, for being here. Hang, hang on one second. Let me go check the time. I said I'll be there in a moment with for your food. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, we have, looks like, maybe 10 more minutes left. We started a little bit late, so I want to make sure we, we cover that whole hour slot. Is there any questions you guys have for me before we continue? We're going to work a little bit more. <clears throat> I'll give you guys just a moment to post any questions or whatever else. I'm going to kick out into question. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, all guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. 
Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get back moving and get ourselves kind of familiar with this blade so that we don't, I don't want to waste, waste the time. So we'll go back to the Jenga and we'll go back again, just kind of coordinating these motions. And it's not a really complicated system. It's not really a system at all. It's really just something that's based off of the movements we naturally do um, when we play. All right. So let's go back to that a little bit and I'll try to do some things to kind of spice up the drill a bit. Uh, maybe we can do some some uh, some work off of me giving you the knife. But let's get back into the flow with the Jenga. Turn the music back on. So we're going to Jenga, and we're going to just kind of get our cuts in as we Jenga, because I got some new people that just, just joined in, get them kind of acclimated with what we're doing, and then we'll do some countering stuff uh, with me feeding you knife attacks, okay? All right. Let's get back to the music. All right. Okay, here we are. So again... So we're going back to just moving, right? So get into your Jenga. So try to coordinate your cuts with your Jenga. So I'm here, look at my feet. So I cut across here, right? If I want more range and I just pivot and make my profile smaller to get that range, okay? So I can break against my Jenga or I'm kind of short because I don't have my hand here, the blade in this hand, but if I go angle myself like this, I can get more, more reach this way, okay? So play around with that. So Jenga, try to like, boom, hide the knife, hide the knife, and break in, boom. Break in. Switch hands if you're able to, work both sides. Again, make your body alive so you have your rhythm but at the same time, when someone has a weapon that can change directions, you know, real fast, you're going to have to be able to, to break. So you see, a lot of times, we're talking about knife defense, when we play, a lot of times, this kind of cross-armed positions are used to check attacks, whether they're kicks, whether they're punches or even if they're, they're blows with a knife, okay? So we would use the outside portions here to defend, and not defending against not doing this, but really trying to check the hand that's holding the blade, okay? So what you can do is as you move, you can work these, these clearing, checking motions, as you move. So again, they work against kicks, scooping kicks that are coming straight in. We can scoop or, okay, cool, uh, Jean, uh, Jean Michel, I'll, I'll take that after class. <clears throat> so, as far as like what we're gonna contact, we're gonna use this part where there's not that many veins and tendons exposed. Um, and of course, if you, can, if you can intercept the hand as it's coming in, to slap it away, then that's great as well, okay? But so now, back to your movement. So that's kind of what we're adding into it, these, these movements where I'm clearing, 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 clearing. Switching my grip. Again here, this is where you can pass it or you can stop it and do some other techniques. But yeah, keep it moving. Keep moving. Boom, arm strike. Bam. Add that in there too. Don't forget your palma tapona. Boom, boom. As you're Awesome, guys. So what I'm going to do, get free, get open, get loose. I'm going to cut. You guys are going to counter cut the arm or move and cut whatever you can, okay? I'm coming from a place of stillness. Okay, when you see me move, boom. Get safe. If you can cut the arm, or cut the hand, or cut whatever you can, do so, but get safe. Even if it's just, boom, clearing so that you can get away. You know, it's not like it's a, it's not always like you have to stay and fight. But treat it in both scenarios. Okay, here it comes, Hoop. Go a little slower. Bam. Bam. 
Mm -hmm. Watch out for my body language. You see me move, boom, intercept, or get away. Very good, very good, very good. So, now I'm gonna feed high out here, okay? We'll go ahead now and we'll pass that arm coming in and we'll counter whatever we can, okay? From now, we're just kind of open here, okay? We're not in the Jenga, we're just kind of in this open movement. I give here, so just imagine that you are passing my hand and cutting, stabbing, whatever, and get away. <clears throat> so I'm coming here diagonal, boom, pass, cut, counter. Again, here is overhead, boom, cut, counter. Same thing, here goes, diagonal, pass the hand, cut, counter, overhead, boom. And again, diagonal, boom, overhead, boom, very good. Here we are, overhead, boom, the other hand now, diagonal, boom, overhead, pass it, and then cut, ready, overhead, I'm sorry, diagonal, diagonal, pass it and cut, overhead, boom, cut, pass it and cut, very good. So from here, options, as I pass, I can pass, check, headbutt, boom, 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 and cut as well. Again, this is highly theoretical and um, not meant to be knife tactics or whatnot. But that's the thing you can add in there to be within the, the cultural context. Pass it down, check it, boom, cabezada, and then cut or sweep. Again, the other side, pass it down, boom, you can cabezada, hit to the head, which leads me here. You can cut or you can go, since my weight has shifted back, you can sweep my legs and put me on the ground, okay? Let's try that, a couple more. Here we go, so I cut in, pass it. So option one, I'll go three times. So uh, first one, cut the arm and it completely cut and finish me off. That would be one. So cut the arm, move, cut the arm, finish me off. Okay, good. Option two, pass the arm, so pass the arm, and then cut, cut, and finish me off. <clears throat> then option three is to pass the arm and then headbutt. So watch the motion. So I'm here, I headbutt. Of course I have the knife, I can do the knife and cut, but we're gonna add the sweep to it, okay? So I come in, I headbutt, and then I sweep, okay? So yes, we know I headbutt, I can come in with the knife, but we've already done that. Just kind of exploring different options for you, all right? So first one is the cut comes, you're going to avoid the cut, counter cutting against the arm or whatever you can, give a few finishing strikes and then get out. That's option one. Option two is I am going to intercept by passing, moving to the side, passing the knife away, and then following up with my own attack with the knife. <clears throat> Okay, option three is I'm going to use that same pass, but I'm going to use it to get in close and jam down. As I do that, I'm going to add my headbutt, boom, and then from here, my arm is across, I'm going to do the leg sweep, okay? So that's incorporating the three traditional, yes, it should be able to be modified. Uh, we'd have to play around with it, and I'd have to have somebody here with me to kind of show what that looks like modified. But yes, it should be able to be modified. <clears throat> um, the, third, the third option, it employs the traditional weapons in capoeira. Of course, the knife, the headbutt, and the hashtag. That's why I want to do it, all right? So three times, here we are. So the first one, I cut, avoid, cut me as many times as you're able to, and then get out. Okay, once again, so I cut, you cut me, get in, get out. Good, good. Okay, next one. I'm going to cut in that same angle. You pass, and then you can, you know, cut me with your knife. Okay, ready? And pass the knife, 
Cut me up and go. Again, pass the knife. I'm gonna go a little slower. Pass the knife. Boom, and cut me up. Awesome. Okay, the third one now is you're going to pass and move in violently with the headbutt. Boom, headbutt. Trap the shoulder so we're right here. My feet are behind, and I'm going to push as I sweep. Push back as I sweep up with my leg, and that'll be the, the hashtag. Okay? Again, so here we are. The third one now. Pass it. So now you push my arm down. I'm trapped. You come in with the headbutt. Boom, there's the headbutt. My weight's back on this leg, and then your leg comes behind and kicks my feet from underneath me, and I'm on the ground. Again, option three, once again. So here I attack, you pass my arm down, trap it, and we're not staying there forever. We're clearing it and we're coming in. Cabezada to my face, to my nose, to my jaw. Uh, kids with head butts. Mouth close to uh, tongue on the roof of your mouth. Um, we're hitting with the rounded portions of our head, not the flat portions of our head, and we're hitting the soft portions of the body of the of the of the of the face. Okay, so we're not hitting teeth. Uh, we're not going, you know, crown to crown, but we're going into the jaw, to the nose, into these soft areas. Okay, so use your curved portion of your head to do that. Keep your mouth closed and your tongue away from your teeth. Okay, so once again, that third one comes in, clear. Trap, boom, cabezada, boom, which way you want to go to get my weight to shift and then cut my legs out from underneath me and then go. All right? Cool. All right, let's, uh, let's um, debrief for a moment. I think that's about it with our time. Um, and this is like my first time teaching a, uh, an exploration of this. It's something we do in our class to uh, teach, um, one, to kind of teach uh, better evas evasions, like to to evade and avoid, um, and just like to be able to do that um, within the span of a broken type rhythm. So like when we're playing, the rhythm is kind of like whoop, 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 whoop. But when you add in the dimension of a knife or something that can attack really quickly, then it kind of forces you to, one, it raises your awareness levels, and it forces you to have to like, you have to move in a, in a way that's a little... Uh, the rhythm is a little bit of broken in comparison to what everything else, as opposed to the flow of things that we're that we're doing. So, I use a knife to kind of help train those kind of attributes in my students. Um, at the same time, it also is a good segue into like getting familiar and comfortable with holding and using a knife and getting comfortable with with dealing with it. Again, like I said in the beginning of this, I want to make sure that um, I'm not saying that this is a a tactical approach to knife fighting or that this is even knife self-defense. And it's, it is that in a very, very limited way. And what we're doing is we're looking at a practice that was once um, um, once a, a viable part of the art of capoeira and that was used quite frequently um, both outside of the halda in the streets and inside of the halda as a type of game. Uh, since those times, the, you know, in the 19th century, uh, these types of games have fallen out of uh, favor um, a lot of it has to do with those practices were part of what was considered, what was, what was, you know, considered in, in Brazilian, uh, society as what cap, what kept capoeira as, um, um, it was kind of connected with, with, with being, um, a thug and being, you know, part of a lower part of society. So of course these types of things, these, these older practices kind of, uh, died out as capoeira kind of became, uh, more socially acceptable to practice and more associated with uh, this emerging uh, Brazilian identity, um, those kind of old-timey things were kind of, you know, you know, set aside. And you'll see people, there are people that will play, bring out knives and they'll bring out razors um, when they play. And again, uh, quite a few mestres will play um, with the finger as the, as the razor or as the knife. Uh, but it's taken on more of a pantomime and symbolic um, manifestation than what it was in the past. So what we're exploring is what what uh, what we're exploring is what evidence we have available today to help us to reconstruct and understand like what that looked like for them. Um, and but there's no like manuals. And there's no one's teaching. Not that I know of this teaching like a a system of of 
of, of capoeira knife fighting or whatever else, but the movements are extensions of the movements that we naturally are normally doing inside of the hall that when we play. They really, really inform the hands. And what I really like to use them for is to teach uh, people what to do with their hands. Because a lot of times when we move, we get in a set pattern of like blocking and covering, which is good, but it's also good to understand that these, these motions with your hands are also, you know, they're, they're, they're covers, they are movements to mesmerize and to confuse, they are, um, they can do a whole wide range of different types of defensive movements, as well as they are also, you know, hits and, you know, you know, cuts and strikes. And I think that's the, the hitting knife, the hidden knife portion that, that we're missing is that when you look at um, old angoleros, the way they move their hands, and then you add a razor or add a knife to that, um, then those movements make even more sense. And it kind of um, speaks volumes to like how much capoeira has evolved and how much was you know really once part of it that's kind of hidden in plain sight. Anywho, um, I hope you guys had fun with that. Um, we will be gathering again next week um, on this on the Hama channel. Uh, to explore another fighting art from the African diaspora. Um, and uh, I believe we're going to be doing uh, Haitian Baton um, next week. I could be wrong if you look at the schedule. Um, yeah, so I had fun. Um, thank you all for bearing with me as I put this out there. And, um, you know, play around with it in your, in your Capoeira game to see how it helps, you know, you know uh, develop you as a Capoeirista. Uh, hopefully for my for my guys that fight with knives, it was something that was somewhat useful or playful for them to kind of incorporate into what they do. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. If, there's any, if there aren't any other questions for me, um, Mr. Mr. Jean Michel, uh, you can uh, let's uh, let's link up. Uh, you can DM me or you can uh, let me know how to communicate with you after this, and we can talk about some of your questions. Oh, hold on a second. No, never mind. Your question's right there. Footwork is excellent. I just want to know if the practical application, the Jenga, is still applied. Because for me, this was the same as boxing, wrestling, sword fighting, weight transfer, footing. But with a lot of styles, it really, <laughs> it really comes natural. Um, so, <clears throat> the fighting application of the Jenga is one of those things that um, it, it's uh, you, you have different different schools of thought on on that uh one the the jinga one it, it depends on what you what you mean as jinga so um in contemporanea couple in capoeira contemporanea there is a very set understanding of what the jinga looks like as far as like what your feet do and what your what your arms do now in angola you have a more looser you have an understanding of what the jinga is but it involves a more looseness of the body um, as far as like which one of those is most applicable to like uh, combat sports, um, I I think that it, it it really depends on what kind of strategies you're gonna you're gonna use um, when fighting like another striker or whatnot. So uh, one way to go about it is like the problem with the jenga is the rhythm of the jenga. So the uh, the the if you if you cultivate a rhythmic jenga that can you can only stay on beat, then you're going to be easy to find uh, for uh, for another opponent. But going back to what I was saying earlier and what you see in Angola, um, if your jenga is rhythmic but you can explore brokenness in that jenga, and even I'll say like erraticness in that jenga. I think that that kind of movement, although it takes a lot of energy to maintain for a long period of time, that type of broken stuttering movements uh, can be very confusing. And so you see like um, in uh, one of the early, like when one of the first like Capoeira KOs in MMA uh, was a, a um, um, our, um, I can't remember his name. He's with uh, Capoeira Ashe. Uh, Mr. Abel Howell's uh, son. And, uh, you know, he fought this guy. And he came out with a very, very, like, aggressive, erratic, jinga, uh, throwing kicks. 
and really just kind of being as 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 being you know really hard to contain. And for a um, a fighter not used to that used to that kind of energy, you know he you know he had the guy kind of on the run, and he was able to like set him up. He did the you know classic you know uh, Haitian all. Uh, like double on the same line, so he threw that that first Composo or Harbashihaya, and the guy backed up into the second one, or he back, backed up and came forward after he thought it passed, and he ate the second one. Um, and, and that's one way that you can effectively, you know, uh, use your jinga, you know, for 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 combat. Um, but you have to cultivate it. Um, another way is is uh, you can view the Jinga as just a, a way of teaching movement, especially movement from, like, natural positions. Because, you know, normally, if we're talking, like, self-defense, we're not necessarily in, like, fighting stances, you know, per se. It may be that, you know, I have to, like, go from here. So, like, you look at me, my shoulders are facing you, my hips are square. Um, I have to kind of go from where I'm at. So then your Jinga becomes how you move and transition from places of, of, of natural rest, if that makes sense. So I'm right here, something happens, I may have to use that kind of movement to get out. And then that's how I would employ, you know, use my Jinga uh, for like a self-defense type of situation. Uh, again, that kind of stuff has to be cultivated and has to be practiced. Um, what I try to do for myself is, um, you know, I, I, I kind of do uh, not... I, I do kind of more of a. I fight from a guard. Per se, I fight from a guard, but it's a it's a um, it's a shifting guard. So I'm changing sides. I'm um, I'm going in between all my points when I use my jinga, but it's uh, very broken. And um, I, in my head, as I'm moving, I'm uh, I'm I'm creating beats, creating rhythm while I'm moving. So I'm thinking about my body as an instrument. So I may be, you know, playing, I may be playing or envisioning beating bow as I'm moving and my body is like, it sounds weird. My body is actually the, the instrument. So it helps me to kind of connect with the music and helps me to kind of keep myself um, 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 moving in a way that's not, that's rhythmic in one way, but it's asymmetrical in another way. Uh, concerning like the knife... Again, like I don't want to stray too far into like knife self-defense because that's a whole nother animal, and I want to be very, very respectful for uh, to the type of training and the type of situation that that is because that's to me, you know, knives. You don't need to be a good knife fighter to be a dangerous knife fighter. You just need to be have a knife and to be aggressive, and um, you know you're you're dangerous with a knife. So again, I want to treat that with with being very, very serious about that. Um, but um, concerning the knife, um, as far as like the couple to play in the game, is movement is the most important thing, and we're really exploring movement. And notice we didn't do any kicks today. It was all just just uh, the striking, the moving of the hands, and the moving of the body. But then when we start adding like some low line kicks and stuff, you can start seeing things that you can add into the mix to help um, offset. Uh, your opponent's attack and again if we're talking about staying in there we're going to duke it out you know that's a very extreme situation as opposed to okay this guy pulls a knife I'm out he pulls a knife I do what I have to do to get past this guy um, you know to survive the next day that's a totally different mindset now there's lots of stories uh, just to kind of show you the place of weapons training in capoeira and just kind of like what it looked like in the past um, there are many stories of guys of, 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 of capoeiristas uh, that were um, adept at fighting with weapons and also adept at taking weapons away um, from other people. Um, uh, Bizoro uh, was one of those guys that he would constantly, um, you know, get into fights with the, uh, the police. Um, I'll answer that in just a second. Z, he'll get it. He'll get was getting into constant scuffles with the police um, uh, for various reasons, and he was notorious for like disarming them, um, whether they were armed with a knife, stick, or guns, or whatever else. Um, a really interesting story and kind of a, a really uh, cool uh, concept connecting uh, capoeira and in and, uh, and, and traditional African um, war medicine is that Bizoro was. Um, <clears throat> He was said to have uh, what they call corpo fechado, which is a closed body in Capoeira. And uh, what that meant was that, you know, there was no weapons that were made like of iron. 
or steel that could harm him. He was impervious to like bullets, impervious to swords and knives and machetes or whatever else. None of that stuff could harm him. Um, there was um, a special type of knife that could kill him or at least like break his corporal pashado, uh, which is uh, Fakaji Tikkum. Uh, this tikkum is like the tikkum knife was made out of like either wood or made out of like bone um, or horn, some kind of organic material. And so the story goes it's like you know Bizarro's running around by uh, kicking you know the police's ass um, and doing his thing, and they were plotting to like uh, to to kill him, uh, but they could never like surround him and beat him, so they decided to like you know trick him. So the stories vary, but like apparently you know Bizarro was looking for work. And he got sent to um, a job, and he had actually because he couldn't read, he had the note of um, he had the note from the contractors who had hired to kill him that this is the guy. So he carried with him the note that this was the guy that um, you need to kill. And so the story goes that they uh, tricked him with a lady who uh, either. Again, either stabbed him or cut him with the with the with the uh, the, the tikkum knife, or she he was with her and they came in and they stabbed him with the tikkum knife and then they were able to to kill him. Uh, but Bizoto's story is like wow because he was like said to like be able to like transform into you know animals. He was able to like fly and do all these wondrous things and stuff. And so, you know, Bizoto was like the you know ultimate like badass superhero and. Uh, Ninth in uh, Bahia at the time, uh, I think his one of his students who survived in the time of Mr. Pastino was uh, Mr. Cobrinha Verge, who was a uh, and uh, Jao Pequeno, I believe, was somehow connected with with Bizoro. Jao Pequeno, uh, rest in peace, has passed away. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of rich history, a lot of rich stories about you know uh, guys, you know, fighting against the police and um, you know fighting you know with weapons and stuff. Um, Madame Sata. Um, was a famous uh, uh, trans crossdresser in the Lapa region in um, in Rio in the in the in the twenties, tens and twenties. Um, you know they fought you know quite frequently against the police and was notorious for um, um, you know just going going to war um, in the streets with with rival um, Maltas or rival rival gangs or even again with the police. Let me see what Jean Michel says. I do the same switching, breaking position. I can relate. Uh, you also made it really understandable. Thank you. Pre I appreciate that very much so, very much so. Thank you. One more thing I want to leave you guys with um, before we go, because our next, we're going to do another Capoeira workshop um, uh, probably uh, two weeks from now, and we're going to be dealing with the stick. Um, and uh, uh, I wanted to kind of touch on something. This is like we're, we're looking at Capoeira as it was or what it was possibly as, uh, practice in the in the early days. Um, I want to, I guess, I, I wanted to say that there was another situation, because when we think of capoeira, we don't really view it as like a fighting art. Uh, we see it more as like a as like a cultural practice, or you know, as a a very um, non confrontational fighting style. <clears throat> but um, there was a period of time in Rio. Where uh, the the um, there were mercenary bands that were stationed in Rio, uh, Hessian and Irish, <clears throat> and um, now mind you, in the city of Rio, they had they had persecuted the capoeiristas to like to damn near extinction. Like they were, they, uh, we talk about return of the Jedi, you know, the the Jedi Order sixty two or whatever else when Palpatine ordered everybody to like you know betrayed a Jedi. I mean, you, you had a similar situation in in, in, um, in Brazil, in Rio, where uh, there was a, a police inspector named San Piao who was um, hell-bent on destroying um, uh, capoeira in that in that area. And he himself was a capoeirista. So it was like this 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 this, uh, this betrayal, big betrayal in a sense. It's part of the reason why in the art um, we actively explore the idea of malicia and treachery and you know watchfulness and mindfulness and vigilance when we interact with each other because this was like uh, really hard lessons uh, that were that were you know that that the capoeiristas were experiencing you have to understand that this art to practice it 
uh, you were beaten, you were put, you were imprisoned, uh, you were exiled, uh, you were killed. Um, so uh, one of those periods of time the, in the city of Rio, the, uh, the Hessian and the Irish uh, mercenaries had um, uh, started rioting because they didn't get paid. And, you know, the same government that, you know, pretty much had persecuted the Capoeiristas in Rio, you know, called on them to help save the city. So the, uh, the Capoeiristas of Rio, you know, rose up and, um, you know, fought against, you know, the Hessian and, and, and Irish uh, mercenaries and, you know, saved the city of Rio from the, from the, from the rioting. Um, and I wanted to say that just because I, I want to connect the practice of the art with, with, uh, with fighting and with the military because it's one of those things that it's not, it's kind of hard to imagine, you know, when you think about Capoeira being like a, a military practice or a warrior practice, because we see the fight, you know, we see it, but it's like, okay, it's like, I get that, you know, yeah, man, it makes you strong, it gives you these, these quick skills, but, like, the idea that, you know, these were the same guys that they were sending out, you know, to fight in, in wars and, and to engage in, in close quarters fighting, you know, in the trenches, um, which is the, you know, the, the dark side origin of the song Paranawe, you know, we see only the strong and we sing Paranawe, and it's like a song of, like, you know, hey, um, you'll get your freedom or you'll get absolved of your crimes if you go and fight in this war for us. So then the song is, you know, hey, you know, Paranawe, Paranawe, Parana, you know, it's talking about crossing the river Parana, Parana to go and fight in this war and get your freedom. But the dark side of that song is that, you know, that was like one of the bloodiest wars, one of the bloodiest conflicts fought in the Western Hemisphere, and a lot of a lot of uh, uh, Afro Brazilians, a lot of you know Bahian Brazilians, the Capoeiristas, died in those wars. Like died because they were fighting in in trench combat in close quarters um, at that time. So it's a really dark song. I mean, it's sung is very very upbeat and uplifting, and it sounds like a really cool freedom song. But when you look at the darker underbelly of the story. It's like, it's, oh, shit, it's like, yeah, you got your freedom, but it's like, you know, the, the, um, they also use that as a way to, you know, solve one of their, what they consider one of their social ills, which was Capoeira at the time, you know. A lot has changed at the time, and now, but anyways, sorry to take so much time. I'm going to let you guys go. I uh, hope you guys had fun. Um, I had fun kind of moving around and getting back into Capoeira and kind of playing around with the knife and then the razor and also getting my, getting my, Getting my, my little my little Malandro on. It's been a long time since I had the opportunity to kind of rock this, you know. So yeah, you know, watch out for the razor. Bam, bam, coming in. All right, guys, you guys be safe. Have a great weekend, and um, I will catch you guys next time. Uh, I believe we're doing Haitian baton. Okay. All right. Take care.